Hi, welcome back fellows. This is the first lesson of the fourth section of this course. How do we see at the nanoscale measurement and characterization tools? So far, we have learned much about nanotechnology due to section one and two, and also we got familiar with a variety of nanomaterials and nanostructures by the previous section. But I've never talked about the equipments that enable us to see at the very bottom level. How do we observe the nanos actually? Because after all, we cannot talk much about the nanos unless we are able to see them or at least measure their behavior and characterize them. As an analogy, consider the time that the human didn't have access to any microscopes to see more details of the objects and go beyond what our naked eyes can see. Then there was no knowledge and discussion about microorganisms like the cell bacteria, right? That's the importance of the nanotechnology toolkits. In, and in this section, I'll introduce you the most common and practical measurement equipments at the nanoscale. I'm Milad, your instructor from Wright Vision Academy. Bear with me. Imaging of the nano world is an essential part of nanotechnology because seeing is believing. We should notice it's not only the matter of watching nano world, but also we need to understand what does our imaging means. And as I talked to you, there are a variety of fascinating instruments that allow us to capture images from nano world. But these instruments that I'm talking about, none of them actually existed a few decades ago, rather than the scanning electron microscope, which was invented in 1930s. If you remember from the lecture timeline of nanotechnology, we saw that the first nanoscale observation tools had been developed by 1980s and then the following decades. More specifically, first revolutionary scanning tunneling microscope was developed by mid 1980s and shortly after the first atomic force microscope was invented. In fact, after invention of those instruments, scientists were able to see nano scale objects. They started to be able to analyze them, understand their behavior and imagine ways of manipulating them. Okay, fair enough. Let's go straight to the methods that are used for imaging and characterizations of nanothings, including nanomaterials, nanostructure surfaces, nanoparticles, nanopores, and etc. In general, two fundamental types of characterization methods exist. Imaging by microscopy and analysis by spectroscopy. So how these methods work generally and what are the differences? Microscopy and spectroscopy differ by their historically initial purposes. Microscopy. The main purpose of microscopy is to observe things that cannot be or hardly can be observed by naked eyes. Overall, it's more about seeing nanos with more details. And in order to make an image of a nano object, we can measure the variation of a physical quantity like interaction forces or induced current amount. We'll see more in the future lectures. On the other hand, the main purpose of a spectroscopy is to understand how matter responds to light or electromagnetic waves in general. A spectroscopy aims to propose analysis between material internal structure and corresponding obtained spectra. Somehow it classifies materials according to their reaction to light, depending on the wavelengths of the electromagnetic that used and the type of interaction with matter that occurs, like the, it can be absorption, scattering, or etc. Although in both branches, we can generate images of the target material, but in the case of a spectroscopy, acquiring an image is not necessary, just a spectra would be enough. I'll talk about the spectra on the spectroscopy part if you don't know what it is. There are several spectroscopy techniques, but the most used ones are X-ray diffraction, Euler violet visible spectroscopy, and Raman shift spectroscopy. Regarding microscopy, available instruments can be divided in two main categories depending on the working principles. One category is based on the beam of electron like a scanning electron microscope and transmission electron microscope. But besides these techniques, some of the most used and practical techniques in nanotechnology measurements are based on the using very, very tiny probe, so-called scanning probe microscopy. Instruments like a scanning tunnelic microscope, STM, and a scanning force microscope are some of those instruments. Each type of scanning probe microscope involves a very fine tip that scans back and forth on a surface. And in the next lecture, I'll present you more details of these fascinating instruments, how they work and how is their features. See you in the next lectures.